This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by the Dover Liberty Book Club. Ron Paul discusses Iraq in this June 16th, 2008 column. It's a truck. Go to the right, see if anyone's moved by the truck. Take the trucks out. Quote, Iraq or the economy? What is the importance of the war in Iraq relative to other current issues? This is a question I am often asked, especially as Americans continue to become increasingly aware that something is very wrong with the economy. The difficulty with the way the question is often asked relates to the perception that we are somehow able to divide such issues or to isolate the cost of war into arbitrarily defined areas such as national security or international relations. Thick, heavy jungle undergrowth like this is also used by the Viet Cong to hide buried mines and anti-personnel weapons. War is an all-encompassing governmental activity. The impact of war on our ability to defend ourselves from future attack and upon America's standing in the world is only a mere fraction of the total overall effect war has on our nation and the policies of its government. The cost of this particular war is enormous, and therefore, it's of great importance. There is no single issue that is more important at this particular time. The war has, of course, made us less safe as a nation and damaged our credibility with allies and hostile nations alike. Moreover, years of growing deficits have been spurred on by the high price tag of war. And the condition to pay that price primarily by supplemental spending rather than traditional on-budget accounting. War takes what otherwise would be a productive economic capacity and transfers both that capacity and the wealth it would generate in normal peaceful times into far less economically viable activities. It also impacts budget priorities in ways that are detrimental to our nation. I have often pointed to the fact that we are building bridges in Iraq while they are collapsing in the United States. All war, but most particularly war funded by monetary inflation, bleeds a country in multiple ways. Obviously, many of the young people who are in the military literally give their blood, and sometimes their lives, fighting in wars of this type. Meanwhile, those who do not fight in the war but fund it are fo forced to pay both the immediate costs as well as seeing their long-term purchasing power erode as the twin pillars of debt and inflation are foisted upon the backs of current taxpayers and future generations. Neither conspiracy nor coincidence explains steep increases in the price of gas as the war drags on. No, this is simply a reality of the inflationary policies that among other things make this war possible. As people who are continually asked to choose whether our nation's teetering economy or the failed foreign policy of the past several decades is most important, as we look forward, it is well for those of us who understand that these two issues are closely linked to continue to explain this fact to our fellow citizens. To fix the problem requires a proper diagnosis." Unquote. The Dover Liberty Book Club. In addition to eating lots of pastries and drinking lots of coffee, they are dedicated to learning about the basic principles which explain our current economic and social situation. And speaking of economic situations, you'll be glad to know most of the books they read are free. Dover Liberty Book Club.